Well, folks, here's a uh, SA200 exciter armature. A uh, machine is common out there in the pipe welding field, as everyone knows. We've got a uh, machine here where the customer says that uh, there's something wrong with it. He doesn't have any output for the grinder or output for the weld lugs. So essentially the machine runs but no power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show everyone how to test these coils and uh, determine if it's the coils or it's the armature itself. And which testing the armature requires uh, some specialized equipment such as a uh, growler that uh, induces a magnetic field on the bench into the windings and you can check for shorts turn to turn and then you use a uh, what's called a megger and that puts up to a thousand volts of uh, power into the uh, leads of the machine uh, of the tester and then you test uh, the windings for a short to uh, to ground to see if the insulation's any good on the uh, armature Either way, if that either test fails, then the armature will need to be replaced uh, or you send it out to have it rewound. So the easiest thing for us to do is to test the uh, resistance across the two coils that's in the, in the uh, exciter frame. Is, and here's coil on the right, coil on the left. This is the right hand brush, which is the positive side, left hand brush, which is the negative side. And what I'll normally do is when I make this test you have to get the armature out of the circuit because that looks like a dead short to your uh, ohms meter so I'll just pull a, the brush out until it's hung up there and uh, then take your meter and you set the meter for your ohms reading so that is this setting here and most any ohms uh, meter will work good for you, whether it's analog or digital. And most, a lot of guys are carrying a cheap digital, and that's just fine. So, what I do is set it for ohms, and then I, since I'm got to use two hands here, one to hold the meter, I'll just I just clip my alligator clip here on this copper braid, and that's connected directly to these leads, and then uh, I can check my ohms reading and see that. I got a good connection by making sure that it goes to uh, zero ohms once you get through all this rust and corrosion that's typically on these guys. See there's that's a dead short okay so that shows that I've got a good connection here with the alligator clip to the copper braid. Then you come over here to this side and you'll find there's a, a wire that goes into the coil itself. See it goes into the coil here in the bottom and then I'll probe right on that to be sure that I'm checking the coil. And I'm looking for almost, I'd like to see 170 ohms if it's original Lincoln coils, which would be shaped um, like this in the older machines with the tape wrapped around. There's still some uh, good manufacturers of aftermarket coils that they still tape them. The newer Lincoln coils you can see the uh, copper windings in here and then they have a, a, an insulating pad on either side on the newer machines. So whatever coil set you have, you're going to have a reading with the uh, uh, lower priced coils from like 120 ohms up and to the uh, standard coils, the heavy duty coils as some call them, will be like 170 or 75 ohms. Well this is reading 165 ohms pretty regular so I have to say that these two coils are fine. Another point to make here is, is that not only do you pull the brush but you also have to take the uh, machine rheostat out of the circuit otherwise you're going to get a much lower reading and I do that by flipping the uh, local remote switch from local to remote and unplug the uh, unplug the remote so that's no longer in the circuit okay so if I do put it back in local you will get a uh, you'll get a lower reading and you can measure that and then you can rotate the uh, rotate the rheostat now since I'm not getting a, lo a lower reading either the switch is bad or the rheostat's bad and that could be part of the problem because if he's running it on local and the rheostat is not in the circuit, it's not feeding the shunt coils inside of the uh, 
generator to make your welding power if you had a machine that just didn't have welding power. So here again, it's in local mode and I still have the same reading I had before and I've rotated the uh, rheostat to see if it was in uh, just not making good contact in one spot. So I say that uh, part of the problem with this machine uh, is in the uh, internal on the local side. So I'll research that next. But there's a, a simple test. If you do find that you're, you do have a, a lower reading, uh, it's open, it'll say OL like that, or it'll have a, a number here and it'll have a K here, uh, or a, um, an M like it shows now for mega ohms, and K is for kilo ohms. Then you want to research to, down in the bottom here, you'll find a wire that goes in between the coils and that'll be a, a flexible wire and you pull that out, skin it back, get to the copper and then you can probe that wire uh, to the uh, to copper over to this side and that'll tell you whether this coil is good or you move over to this side and then you check that skinned back wire again and if this shows OL or a real high reading then you know that this coil was bad. So you got half of uh, what uh, 170 or say 75 ohms uh, and here and then you have a very high reading here or it's OL then you know this side would be bad or depending on whichever one's bad will have the uh, odd reading. So that's in a nutshell. Hopefully I didn't go too fast. Um, hopefully I can do some more videos on these machines and dispel a lot of myths that are out there on, on the uh, internet and going around the oil field. So thanks for watching. Any questions, post them in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you.